In this video, we'll learn basic firewall configuration in Proxmox virtual environment. Let's review basic Proxmox firewall settings. In the resource tree, navigate to data center. When you select a node, the firewall section is located towards the bottom of the content panel, therefore you may need to scroll down to locate it. If we click on firewall, we will find the options to create rules or insert a security group. If we click options, we can find important aspects like the default input policy. In this case, it's to drop all incoming packets. The firewall is disabled by default and we must be careful to set it up correctly before enabling it, otherwise we could even block access for remote management. The next three options are used to configure security groups, aliases, and IP sets. We'll explore these options in a few moments. Let's go back to Firewall to create a rule. Firewall rules consists of a direction and an action and you apply them on an interface. Let's click the Add button. Directions give you the option for In, which refers to incoming traffic to the node, or Out, outgoing traffic from the node. The action give you the options to accept, drop, or reject the traffic. In this case, I'll leave the default options in for direction and except for action, and use ENS161 for the interface. As any firewall rule, Proxmox let us configure source and destination addresses and port numbers. This gives us granularity when creating rules. Proxmox also provides a preset of common protocols and port numbers like TCP or UDP you can choose from. Scroll down to locate the one you are looking for. Furthermore, you can also specify a macro name. Macros contain predefined sets of rules and options for common software and traffic styles like HTTP or NTP. For this example, I'll search and select SSH. Remember we can specify the source and destination IP addresses to create a very specific rule, or not specify any and have the rule apply to all traffic. In this case, I will leave them blank. If we click the advanced checkbox at the bottom of the add rule window, we can specify the log level for this rule. You can select from no log to any of the eight logging level options. I'll select the warning level. I'll also check the enable option for the rule to take effect when the firewall is enabled. Finally, click the add button. We can now see the rule has been configured. Let's explore security groups now. It is not possible to reuse a rule created on another node, therefore if you need to configure the same rule in different nodes, instead of create them manually all over again, you can simplify the process by creating security groups. A security group is a collection of rules, defined at cluster level, which can be used in all VM's rules. In the content panel, under Firewall click Security Group. The first step is to create a group. This is really simple. Just click Create and specify a name. The comment is optional. In this case, I'll type HTTP underscore traffic and click Create. Once created, click on it and we can notice we can now add a rule. Click the Add button. We can see we get the same Add Rule window we just explored except for the interface field. We'll see why is not listed in just a moment. For now, I'll create a rule for HTTP and another for HTTPS. Let's do it. We can see the security group is now ready to accept incoming HTTP and HTTPS traffic. I'll create one more group for SSH traffic. And we are ready, we have two security groups created and now, navigate back to Firewall. Click the Insert Security Group button. If we click the drop-down button in the Security Group field, we can now see the two groups we just created. I'll select HTTP traffic, apply it to ENS161 interface and enable it. Then click Add. We can now see the security group listed in the Firewall. 
Let's see the flexibility of the security group in action. In the resource tree, click 101 Ubuntu CT and navigate to firewall. Imagine you need to apply the same rules for this node, you would need to create the rules manually again, because as mentioned before, you cannot reuse rules created on a different node. Gladly, we already created some security groups. Let's click Insert Security Group. We can now see and use the security group rules defined at a cluster level in this node, an Ubuntu container in this case. I'll select HTTP traffic and click the Add button. The new rule using the security group settings is now in place. This allows admins to organize the firewall rules for easier management. Let's explore IP aliases and IP sets now. Navigate back to Data Center, Firewall, and click Alias. You can configure names for commonly used IP addresses in your network. This allows you to identify sources and destinations in your firewall rules using the names of your servers or network devices instead of IP addresses. Click the Add button. For this example, I'll create two aliases for internal file servers. File server 1 with IP address 10.1.1.45. And file server 2 with IP address 10.1.1.46. We'll see how to use them in just a moment, but let's create an IP set before. IP sets are groups of various IP addresses, aliases, or hosts, so you can similarly refer to them in firewall rules as a single item. Click the IP set and then click the Create button. I'll name it simply File Servers and click OK. Click the file server's IP set and then click the Add button. I can now select from the available aliases or just type a new IP address. In this case, I will add the two file servers I created, file server 1 and file server 2. Let's go back to Firewall and click Add. We can now see the aliases and the IP set we just created. This simplifies administration. If an IP address need to be added, you can simple edit the IP set and all rules using it will be updated automatically. You are now ready to start configuring your firewall rules in Proxmox. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.